Hey comic book fans, welcome back to Comic Book Corner 2.0 and fans, you're back with me, Mike Spider Slayer, getting ready to do that all-important comic book review so you, the fans, can make a decision on what comic books to buy. And today, guys, we're talking about Like Father, Like Daughter, issue number two. That's right, guys. This book is done by Short Fuse Media, and the writer of this book is Cat Comic Uno, a good friend of mine for a very long time, and... Uh, fellow worker on Comic Frontline. Uh, however, I am not going to be lenient just because she is my friend, but it is a hard review to do. Uh, the artwork in this book is done by Wayne A. Brown, colors done by David Averana, and the letters are done by John Palmer IV. Um, the artwork is pretty good in this book. Uh, I, what I love about the book is the colors. Uh, the colors make the issue really pop for me, um, and some of the facial expressions are pretty good, but at times, if you read the book, you're going to find out that the facial expression uh, is maybe very dramatic for the first, for the certain scene or over the top. And uh, some of the characters' faces can look almost very evil looking when they're not meant to be. Uh, but I like the detail that goes into the character's hair, like Cassie's hair and, uh, and whatnot. And um, uh, I like some of the uh, little details that go into the book. Uh, one of the things that I noticed in the book is some of the high school kids, uh, even though they're jocks, they tend to be like really beefcakey in their arms. And some of the artwork was inconsistent when it comes to Wes's arms at, at times too. Uh, there'll be times where his arms is, is, is like really lengthy or skinny looking. And then in other pages right here, we can look at his forearm or his muscle and he looks like he's pretty, he's pretty, uh, you know, he's pretty jacked up. So I was like, wow. So, and then here for another instance, he's got the skinny arms there as well. Uh, but overall, the artwork is pretty cool. And uh, I love the colors of it. And uh, I think Cassie is my favorite looking uh, character out of all of them in, in the actual issues. So, all right. So let's recap a little bit of the story and tell you what I thought of the story. So, um, if you're not familiar with uh, Like Father, Like Daughter, we find out that, that Cassie, who is the main character in the series, uh, has developed powers like her father. Her father left her back in the day to uh, try to save the world, and now her father is trying to actually keep tabs on her. Uh, because in this issue, we kind of find out that he realizes that uh, she has powers. Um, but this book here opens up with invulnerable just walking down the street and some common thugs are like dude we're gonna we're gonna kill invulnerable he's gonna be dead and we're gonna be famous for killing him so they go to kill him and they like epically fail i mean they, they invulnerable makes short work of him throws him into the car and that's that and that's how the book kind of opens up but in this issue the the cool thing is is you find out that uh cassie and uh and her best friend stephanie which i think these characters have really cool names because uh you know cat's couple favorite characters are stephanie brown and 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 cassie lang so uh it's cool that she named some of these main characters based off of the the characters that she loves in everyday comics but anyway we find out that they go to this guy and his name is wes and uh, they know he's like that nerdy geeky guy in school and they try to find out any type of information about superheroes uh, on how maybe she could actually get rid of these powers because she doesn't want to be a superhero. And uh, it's cool because throughout the book and throughout the issue, you wind up finding out that uh, this guy is giving them all kinds of information about 
you know, Superman and quizzing them about his weakness and Spider-Man about with with great uh, power comes great responsibility. And it was really cool. And at first you felt like the girls were kind of using Wes, but later on they developed this actual uh, friendship in the in the book, which was neat. Invulnerable has a friend that uh, kind of gives him a job to do to kind of keep tabs on Cassie about, um, you know, just making sure she's okay and, and whatnot. And then what happens in the issue is we also find out that Cassie has this uh, crazy vision and uh, it's kind of weird because she sees all these scientists and it was like an island and all kinds of weird things. So it's something that might happen in the future and we find out that uh, Wes asks if she's okay and then she winds up going home and she has her friends uh, meet her at home and to discuss things further. So uh, I thought it was an interesting book. I thought it was really, really good. Um, you know, in my opinion, I thought we didn't really need invulnerable in this issue. I thought that the beginning was kind of pointless. We really didn't need to have these common thugs just go down the street and just try to stab him. And then he throws them and then that's the end of them. It, it would have been fine if the book for me opened up with, with Cassie and Steph and, and, and finding Wes and whatnot and, 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 and talking about them, about the, the powers and whatnot. And uh, and it's it's just kind of funny that Vulnerable is just sitting around the house and he just makes this random call. He's like, yo, keep tabs on my daughter, you know? When he, almost he can do it himself uh, because he can fly or whatnot. I, I think he can fly and he has all these powers. So I think he can kind of keep away from his daughter. I don't know why he just hired some random friend to do it. So uh, I thought that was kind of odd at times too. But I do really like the book on, again, the Stephanie and um, and Cassie and Wes moments when it had to do with all the superheroes being mentioned in there and finding out powers and uh, they're just high school kids and they're trying to figure all this stuff out and they're a cool little team, you know, and I can't wait to see what the future has to bring uh, with this whole scientific thing. So it left some good mystery there and it seems like the book might get a little bit darker as time goes along too. So uh, it'll be interesting to see if Cassie and Vulnerable work together. Uh, will they become friends? Will they have a closer relationship? Uh, but I thought overall it was good. I, I'm going to give this one a 4 out of 5 stars. Besides the little nitpicks of the artwork and the little invulnerable uh, part in the beginning, I thought overall the book is a really nice book to read. And hell, for Kat writing you know, this comic and this is her first attempt at a comic book, um, it, it's, it's hats off to her because this takes a lot of work and a lot of creativity and uh, it, it's brilliant and uh, I couldn't have done it any better myself because I've never done it before. So uh, overall, again, four out of five stars for me. If you guys are interested in Like Father, Like Daughter, you can go to www.shortfusemediagroup.com. Uh, I'm sure you can try to pick up issues number one and issues two. There's other titles on the way from Short Fuse. They're up and coming. Uh, publisher and uh, I think you guys would be surprised with some of the stuff they have coming out here so again guys tell me what you think in the comments below did you purchase this book are you going to purchase this book and you have any other questions that has to do with like father like daughter uh, please again leave them in the comments below so again fans as always thank you for watching comic book corner 2.0 and until the next comic book review this is Mike Spider Slayer signing off take care guys see you soon